Welcome to Adco Aviation. On the 12th video, I discuss the tail, wheel, and springs. Today, I'd like to start discussing our XL's tail feathers. First off, I've always closed with, if you're on the fence about starting a legal eagle build, hopefully I've shown just how easy it can be. Well, I stick to that story, but I also encourage you to do your research on each step of your build. On YouTube, download old documents, I have found a lot of good learning tools from sites like the FAA.gov, for instance, the AC43.13. This advisory circular has been around for years. There's info in there for anything from welding tubing to wooden structures to covering wings to aluminum gussets. I know we're not building certified aircraft, but pretty much anything we need to know for building our ultralight legal eagle is in that document as many of you know the legal eagle tail is the most modified part of our aircraft there are many that rounded the edges to appear more like a cub's tail and i believe it was joe spencer's putt putt where he had clipped the tail in order to fit it in a standard trailer i remember whoever it was stated that he didn't notice any differences in performance once it was clipped. With that being said, since most of you know my plans were always to fold my wings, I wanted to narrow up the width of my horizontal feathers without losing any surface area so it can go inside a trailer or toy hauler of some sort. My plan is to not fold my tail if possible to help save weight and speed up the takedown and reassemble times. I do have a backup plan if I need to fold them though, because I'd much rather fold them than have to remove them totally. Enough babbling. So I finally received the rest of my tubing from wicks and air parts and got my gas bottle refilled. So I began to weld the hinges. I know, not super pretty, but I know I had good penetration because I had to run my 3 quarter and 3 16 drill bit through the inside of the tubes to clean them out. I then sliced them into half inch pieces. I painted two and a half pairs white for the vertical hinges and four pair red for the horizontal hinges. Yes, I said pairs. I'm only using two per hinge instead of the three to help save weight. So speaking of saving weight, let's go ahead and discuss my tail feathers. To the drawing board I went. As some of you know, I'm going with a World War I theme for my Eagle, also inspired by the old DOS Ugly Stick radio control airplane. I knew the plans weren't to scale, so I drew the original out to scale and then made the proposed modifications in red. I wanted to keep the same mounting points, so if it wouldn't work, I could always remake new tail feathers to the plans and plug them straight in. As redesigned, I saved about 52 inches of 3 quarter inch tubing, 13 inches of 5 8 inch tubing, 2 and a half inches of half inch tubing, 13 and a half inches of the 3 8 tubing. Also, about 18 inches less was needed for the ribs. Because I have basically the same surface area, the fabric usage is similar, but would save almost 7 feet of overlap so I guess I'll save some weight there too. I drew out the proposed design on the bench and measured all the ribs. I took those to the sheet metal. I drew them out and cut them. And I took them to the brake. It's amazing how those flimsy O2O aluminum strips can become these super strong tapered ribs. One thing to note, rather than making the sides of the ribs a quarter inch tall, I chose to make them a half inch and bent the last eighth inch or so of the edge in about a 45 degree, which should also help with strength, but definitely would help soften the edge to aid in covering. 
and keep the 104 fabric from being cut from the sharp edge. I wanted the rudder horn to pull from the hinge plane instead of an inch or so behind. I saw somewhere how the cables will pull more evenly and not get one side slack while pulling the other side. Makes sense, but we'll see. So here's a few picks as I was trying to figure out how to hold it all together. I'm so sorry I never took any pictures, but I ended up taking painter's tape and made temporary gussets with that tape, so to speak. It amazingly worked great. I was able to build all my tail surfaces while waiting on my Clecos to arrive. So a little tip on bending your tubing. I had a scrap piece of three quarter inch plywood and I made a 16 inch arc on one side. Of course you'd have to experiment on the size of the arc for your bends. I used it with a scrap piece of 1x4 as the holder. You don't have to get all worried about making jigs. What is it Leonard always said? Jigs don't fly airplanes? Or something to that effect. Just use what you have. I even had two super tight radiuses on my 3 8 tubing. So I just pulled the tubing around the conduit bender. Basically, just take it slow and make the tubes match your patterns you drew on the table. Another tip I used. On my design, I placed the 3 8 and the 5 8 inch tubes into one side of the 3 quarter inch hinge tubes. I had to mark the exact center line on all six of these tubes. Very simply, I marked the approximate location with a sharpie. I held the tubes in place and took my square and scraped the center line on both places. At the same time, you could have even done the same thing on the opposite side of the 3 quarter inch tube for your hinges. This is a very easy way to make sure you don't have a twist on your surfaces. Then I was able to drill 3 8 or 5 8 inch hole for the adjoining piece to slip right in. So, let's make tacos. I mean gussets. I'd recommend making templates from paper and then trace it on to the O2O aluminum sheet. Now for the holes for the wire braces which are basically in the same location as the plans. I took a 5 16th inch with 049 thick walled aluminum tubing and cut the spacers to the proper length. I beveled the spacers inward with a countersink. In the gusset, I drilled an eighth inch hole and drove a punch to contour the gusset into the beveled spacer. I also used JB Weld to hold them in place. So at this point, I'm ready to cover my tail pieces. How did I do as far as weight, you ask? The rudder with the horn included was the heaviest of all pieces. It came in at 19.2 ounces. The vertical tail came in at 18.2 ounces. Each of the horizontal tails came in at 16.4 ounces. And each of the elevators came in at only 11.9 ounces. That's a total weight of 94 ounces or 5 pounds and 14 ounces. I know I've strayed a little from the plans here, at least in shape, but as I stated before, I tried to stay true to Leonard's spirit and I wanted to keep all the attachment points the same. And hopefully you can still gain some insight that would even help with a standard shape tell. Anyways, Hopefully, the weather will cooperate, and I'll get the fuselage completely welded soon. Hopefully, real soon, I'll finish up the tail section, and you'll have to come back on the next video and see our total numbers to see how, just how well we came in with the tail feathers once they were ready to paint. I should have several more exciting videos coming soon. I have so many, many projects started already. If the Lord allows me the time... To get them finished I'll keep adding videos remember if you want something covered shoot me a message and I'll try to get it added now let's get ready for rec law hopefully I'll see some of you there I hope you have enjoyed this video and hopefully found some of the info helpful in your research
And if you're on the fence about starting a legal eagle build, hopefully I've shown you just how easy it can be. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe to my YouTube, Odyssey, or Rumble channel. Thank you, and be safe.